Guys, that's your match today with another Shadow Legends Champion Guide, this time on Gizmak the Terrible, who is a mythical, really beast mode, Magic Affinity Ogren Tribe Champion. Uh, today, we will cover everything about his kit. He does have a 4.5 overall rating on hellhades.com. That's his base form. Let's see what they grade his alternate form. They give it a 4. It's weird. I mean, I, I personally just review these mythicals as one package because oftentimes, I think in most cases, there's purposely a lot of synergy between the base form and the alternate form. Sometimes there's self-buffs that they're trying to empower their second form. Sometimes in Gizmak's case especially, there's debuffs that actually empower the alternate form. So you can't really judge or have one without the other to its full effectiveness at least. Uh, his key areas are going to be Clan Boss, 5 out of 5, Hydra, 5 out of 5, Spider, 5 out of 5, Spider, Hard, 5 out of 5, I Golem hard five out of five frost spider eternal dragon in arena a four out of five so clearly a lot of versatility in this dude's kit i see him being used in late game late game uh live arena pick rate one four two in gold three a one six two in gold four a ban rate of 10.46 that is very high uh 6.51 3.05 can you kind of obviously a lot of it has to do with the you know the dirtier pay to win you get the probably higher you are in live arena but i think this is also telling if you look at live arena stats even if you're not a live arena or even a pvp player it can be insightful because you go to go four and you say wow the end game late game players are picking him a lot more but they're banning him a hell of a lot more as well his multipliers on his base form, before we uh, review the entire kit, actually we'll come back to the multipliers, what am I talking about, let's see what this dude does, he's an Ogren tribe, he's the only mythical at the time of this recording in the Ogren tribe, uh, and I think my cat just tipped something crazy over, because that was a loud bang, either that or someone's breaking into the studio, so uh, look forward to that in the second half of the video. Support on his base form, he has a lot of base HP, 23k almost, 1343 on the base defense really solid his speed is 115 very fast and he has crit rate in all battles by 27 percent so you can build teams around that extra crit rate or it can benefit your support damage dealers basically champions that you're not building to 100 percent crit rate but you know can still stand to benefit from it with decent multipliers even as supports or debuffers or yada 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 on his a1 magma hurl attacks one enemy increases the duration of hp burns on the target by one turn if the target's not under hp burn it decreases the duration of two random buffs on that enemy by one turn instead so really solid two random buffs by one turn these effects cannot be resisted if the attack is critical then attacks all enemies not under hp burn debuffs except the initial target decreases the duration of two random buffs on all enemies by one turn cannot be resisted so there's a lot going on here on his just his first ability Attack one enemy, increase the duration of burns. Then attacks all enemies not under HP burns, except the initial target. So essentially a built-in AoE, irresistible on all the decreased duration of two random... Decreased duration of two random buffs on all enemies that can't be resisted is extremely strong, especially in the arena. It's polymorph proof. Flames of Resentment. However, unfortunately, there's a lot of non-polymorph proof stuff going on this dude's kit as well. Flames of Resentment is A2 ability on a three-turn cooldown when boat attacks all enemies before attacking increase the duration of hp burns instantly activates hp burns and can't be resisted if this champion's crit rate is over 100 percent finally increase the duration of all debuffs on all enemies by one turn places a decreased speed on all enemies for two turns this cannot be resisted if the attack is critical my god very powerful ability an AoE attack, instant activation of burns, increase the duration of burns, uh, decrease speed, can't be resisted. I mean, pretty dang powerful, right? Increase the duration of debuffs at the same time on a three-turn cooldown when booked. Let me at them! Increase crit damage, increase crit rate, increase crit speed on all allies for three turns, then grants the extra turn. Man, oh man! But it keeps getting better here, guys. Spark of Anger. Before the start of this champion's turn, places a burn on all enemies. Can't be resisted if he has 100% crit rate. 
before the start of this champion's turn, has a 50% chance of placing a burn on all enemies, can't be resisted. Uh, this is so powerful. Even if they have stone skin, whatever, it can't be resisted, right? You can place those burns. Uh, when we go back to the burn, cannot be resisted if the if a champion's crit rate is 100% or higher on all the increases. Nothing can be resisted in his entire kit. Super powerful. On his alternate form, on his A1, Totemic Vengeance attacks one enemy of this champion's HP or the initial target's HP is lower to or equal than 50%. Instead, it does an AoE. So you should always be targeting enemies with this Totemic Vengeance whose HP is equal to or lower than 50% when given the option. Increase the duration of two random debuffs on the target by one turn. If an AoE attack, increase the duration of two random debuffs on all enemies. Cannot be resisted if the attack is critical scales off hp and defense his hp and his defense has also been scaled up on his alternate form almost 25k on the hp almost 1500 on the defense the trade-off is 14 less speed at 101 on the a2 kaboom this is a hard hitting freaking nuke on his a2 three turn cooldown aoe before attacking decreased defense on all enemies can't be resisted if they're under a burn so basically you're well we'll talk about the cadence of these skills in a moment extra hit on enemies under hp burn extra turn if you kill an enemy my god ungodly fury his a3 on a three turn cooldown again places a pain link debuff on the target for two turns it cannot be removed resisted or blocked hence it ignores everything stone skin block debuffs everything uh mithrala at 1100 resistance can't be blocked when calculating the damage inflicted by pain link 75 percent of the attacker's skill multiplier is reflected back to the the attacker the damage inflicted by the pain link debuff will ignore 100 of the target's defense what does this mean when given the option put pain link on their damage dealer they'll kill themselves also place a taunt and an unkillable buff on this champion for two turns also or finally places an ally protect on all allies except this champion for two turns my god, this is an insane kit, an insane ability. I really do think you can make the case that he's one of the most powerful mythicals in the game. He's certainly very unique. It's hard to compare him with some of the other mythicals. But basically, you open up with an HP burn irresistible on everybody, right? Even if they're under stone skin, whatever. Then you open up with Let Me At Him. It's a self, it's a buffing ability on everybody on your team. Three great buffs, crit damage speed, most importantly, crit rate as well. And then you take an extra turn, you transfer, you either combust, instantly activate burns in PvE or whatever, or in PvP, you come into the A2 or anywhere for that matter, you come into the A2 and you kaboom them. They're guaranteed to have the burns. So you get two hits, you kill somebody because it hits hard as hell. You place a decreased defense, you take an extra turn. This is all in one turn, ladies and gentlemen. This is all in one freaking turn. You place the pain link, can't be resisted. Uh, you get the taunt, you got unkillable, you got ally protect. So in one turn, we are placing a burn on everybody. We are placing a crit damage, increased crit rate, increased crit speed on everybody. We're placing a decreased defense on enemies. We're placing two hard hits, probably killing somebody. We're placing a pain link. We're placing a taunt, unkillable, ally protect all in one freaking turn. That's insane! This dude is insane, man. All right, all right, all right. Let's go and let me show you quickly how I have him built. This is my by far my favorite build for this champion, whether you're in PvE or PvP, but especially PvP. Uh, obviously, he's susceptible to polymorph with the burns, but if you can get him by that polymorph check, forget about it, man. He can one-shot teams with a kaboom. Anyway, Gizmak the Terrible, I have him in lethal and stone skin. Four-piece lethal, four-piece stone skin. Uh, it's my favorite build if you have a couple stone skin accessories on your account. Otherwise, I would put him in lethal, savage, perception gear. Uh, stone skin crit damage on the gauntlets. HP percentage on the chest piece. Speed on the boots. We have accuracy, or excuse me, we have defense. We don't need accuracy on this dude. You kidding me? We have defense on the banner. 
We have crit damage on the amulet and we have defense on the ring. Now in a perfect world, I would go with HP on the uh, the banner and on the ring. However, I only had defense on stone skin for Ogren. So defense, I mean, his damage on the A2 as we spoke about it scales off of defense as well, but HP is the primary uh, damage multiplier on that A2. Speaking of multipliers really quickly here, he does have a 5.5 on his A1 attack based. This is a godlike breakdown. Wait a sec. What is his base attack on his 738? I don't think it's godlike personally, but hey, that's just me. On the A2, a 5.8 on the AoE with a burn. And then on his, you're not looking at a ton of AoE d nuke damage. It's all about burn damage on his base form. The nuke damage comes off the alternate form. He's got a one point, excuse me, on the on an AoE, he has a 0 0.2 HP or a 0 0.7, or is that the single target? Either way, he has a moderately, not a very hard hitting, but not a super weak average. <laughs> That's what it would be on the A1. On the AoE, it's a 0 0.23 plus a 0 0.7 defense. It freaking smacks, and it can be a two-time hitter. Uh, so those are his multipliers, guys. Let me go ahead and uh, do I even ha I have him booked out as well? <sighs> Man, mythical books are the worst, but also, you know, there's not a lot of them, and they're all really good, except for the damage. But, you know, well, even Kaboom damage, 20% damage is a lot, right? So anyway, I digress. I have Incinerate as a Blessing. If you're going to run this dude in the arena, check out Incinerate. Increase the damage inflicted by HP burn debuffs placed in the arena. Uh, we have a three-star awakening right now, so we're looking at a 50% extra damage from said burns. If you weren't going to run him in the arena or you didn't really care about, you know, burns in the arena, you could obviously run him a number of different ways. My, my favorite would be probably Soul Reap. Uh... I wouldn't really go Brimstone or Polymorph on this champion unless I was going to build him for accuracy, but there's no need to build him for accuracy. So unless I had him at six stars, I probably would not go that way. I'd probably actually go Soul Reap on him uh, instead of Incinerate, unless I had him six star awakened, in which case I would probably go Brimstone or Polymorph. All right, let's go to the Masteries. Yeah, we built him like a good old nuker. We don't really need... Uh, accuracy, so I, I forewent the support side of things. However, I will say, even though we can't get value from the accuracy masteries, we could certainly pick up HP, come down to Exalt and Death, come down to Rapid Response. We could even pick up Arcane Celerity. We could pick up Evil Eye and Master Hexer to extend the duration some more. He just has a lot of debuff extension in his kit already. I'd rather have the Deterrence and Retribution chances at Counterattack. His AoEs on the A1 has a chance on both abilities for AoEs, really strong. On the offensive side of things, I went with Helm Smasher. I think that's the way to go. If you're just running him in Hydra Clan Boss where he's really, really good, you could absolutely consider just going with War Master instead. Uh, let's go ahead and give him a shot here, guys. Let's start in the arena. Uh, let's just start against the, the, the last team that we see here. All right, so burns on everybody. There they go. Beautiful, beautiful. Obviously, the bur the burns can be cleansed, right? So just be aware of that. Uh, you know, I have this team here that is uh, super fun, super fun. Uh, Timit, Kaja, the whole shebang. Should we revive here? Yeah, well, might as well. All right, Estrid on the squad as well. All the, the other champions on this team, they're basically just filler. They're basically just filler. I kid. But Gizmak is awesome. All right, so we get a burn on everybody except for Siffy. Uh, let's go ahead and self get buff everybody. I keep saying self buff. I just mean buff. Buff everybody. Go into his alternate form. Let's kaboom them. Boom! Everybody except for Siffy. She had that burn on still. She would have died. Let's just A1. Boom! <laughs> Something really cool about Gizmak. I love that he, he gets like he's a small little fella. And I love that he gets super, super big <laughs> when he uh, when he transforms forms here, right? So uh, Armands on the team, yeah, whatever, dude. Who cares? We're not scared of you, Armands. No way, dude. We're not scared of you. Uh, let's a two get rid of those pesky block damage. Come in here. Go ahead and Timit's pretty dang good too, man. I made a whole video talking about Timit. I think he's a cool champion. All right, let's self. I keep, how many times am I gonna say self buff, man? Let's buff this dude. Let's go into the A two. Let's kaboom. 
He's going to kill somebody, thus he's guaranteed an extra turn, right? Extra turn, who we want to pain link? Uh, we can't uh, target the nuker, so we might as well pain, pain link Duchess, right? Look at how much my man is doing, again, in one turn. The incinerate does extra damage on those burns as well. You gotta love it, man. This guy, the big fella, Gizmak. Now, I've already used all my uh, my Hydra keys. Actually, it might be a reset, but I don't have a team built around him. But this dude, he's a beast in Hydra, you know? I mean, he just does so much. He does so much in his kit. He got turned into a sheep there, so maybe we do care about Armands. We might be in, in a little bit of trouble here. Let's see. Has Estrid even taken a turn yet, man? I think she's the only champion I have on this team not in stone skin, and it speaks to the value of stone skin, right? I did something fun with this team, too, as you guys haven't noticed already. I put a bunch of champions that all have, uh, except for uh, Kaja, that all have extra turn mechanics in their kit, right? So they're all doing multiple skills, which I thought was fun. All right. So he's going to metamorph to his uh, his other form. Ah, uh, there's the burns. There's the burns. Now, against Marishka, probably the last target we want to be thinking about burns. We do land the decreased speed. We have everybody provoked. Let's go ahead and get some more turn meter fill. I'm going to just show you guys. I mean, I think you get how special this dude is. He's one of those guys, really, one of those champions that just taking five minutes, ten minutes, whatever he took to go over his kit in depth Talk about every skill. You start recognizing, holy moly, man. This guy does so much, right? He really does. All right, can we end this, please? You know we're not gonna because we have to deal with her. Oh, and she gets the heal. She gets the revive off, too. Golly. Golly. All right, Dutch is down, but she's going to be up in just a moment. You saw that AoE that he just uh, that he just cast because of all those burns. A little redundant that we do have Estrid and him on the same team, I guess, you know, in hindsight here. Okay. No revive. I think she's two turns away from the revive anyway, so we're totally good. Unless Armand's has something to say about that. Let's see. Uh, nope, we should be okay. Let's see. Got a lot of turn meter fill. No sheep. I like that. I like that. Go ahead and hit me hard. Okay. That's good. That's cool. Go in there. Couple hits on Duchess. Let's revive, sure, why not? I love the revive because it instantly activates uh, Timmit, right? All right, it's time to kaboom, guys. It's time to kaboom! Boom! <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. So I think you guys get the point. Holy crap, he is so fun, man. What a fun champion. All right, it's Ice Golem time! Ice Golem Hard 10. I was just messing around, uh, just trying to throw a random team in there. Uh, I don't want I don't want uh, <laughs> the world's strongest Turvald in here. I think that's overkill. Let's put, like, I don't know, Artak or something in there, right? Uh, I don't have Artak built to be especially, you know, uh, crazy. Uh, where the, I thought I was using him recently. There he is. Okay. So a few notes on this team. I have them in the aura lead. I don't need to, but I have them there just for the heck of it. It's not the big, the world's best speed run, this Ice Golem 10 hard team. Um, primarily because there's no there's no instant activation going on other than other than Gizmak, right? And he, I have him, so he's still coming into Kaboom. Uh, but I will point out, if any of you guys are lucky enough to have Harima, who's on this squad as well, I tell players this... A few of my friends play play Raid, right? And a couple of them actually have Harima, which they're very lucky. She's one of the best PvP champions in the game. I think she's underrated in a few areas of PvE, particularly Ice Golem. Particularly Ice Golem Hard 10. She can mitigate critical hits. Critical hits, uh, or the ignore defense rather, excuse me, is so huge on the Ice Golem because he's all about ignoring defense and he's magic affinity, right? So she can do a great job at keeping your team alive with her passive, just like in the arena, but it works very well against the Ice Golem as well. She can help on those waves too. She actually doesn't do much damage against the actual Ice Golem. And I'm sorry, I said magic affinity. Uh, she's good against magic affinity. Obviously works against force and void as well. Heck, it even works against spirit if you want to. Uh, but here we go. We're at the Ice Golem. Why is he so good against Ice Golem? Well, he's tanky AF. And he does a hell of a lot of damage, all those burns, right? So, like, what else do you want for Ice Golem? That's exactly what you want, right? 
So we come in there. You can pair him with other burners. We have three burners on this team, right? It doesn't matter. He's still going to be just fine. Gizmak, he, he gets along with others. He's not super selfish, you know? We have the instant activation with Walking Tomb Drangs, A1. We have the instant activation with Gizmak's A2 on his base. We have the instant activation with Artac on his A2. So we have a lot of activation going on. We also have a lot of burn placement. The best thing is we have a lot of burn extension here. So we don't have to worry about, oh, we only have like one burn placer, but we have a lot of instant activators, yada, yada, yada. So I'm thinking to myself, how can I speed up this run? And actually, the man of the myth, the legend, the man of the hour, Gizmak dies there, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, the job was done. The job was, was uh, very well done, if I do say so myself. This dude's awesome, man. Like I said, you can run him. I mean, we looked at it, right? You can run this dude, like, almost everywhere, man. He's really... First of all, I, can, I, I assume this video is going to get no views. Because who the hell has this guy, right? He's a mythical. I don't do a lot of reviews on mythical, but I, I'm going to have to. I want to do every champion in the damn game. So going to have to start somewhere. Uh, so I am going to get around to doing all the mythicals. I have seven on my account. So we're going to do all of them. Uh, but I mean, dude, Gizmak is, is a boss. He's a boss, right? Damage wise, you can't read too much into it because it depends on who placed the burns versus activating the burns, uh, but still carried his own with 2.6 million. Uh, my man's great in Hydra. Great in so many, in arena, great in so many areas of the game. Uh, congratulations. I'll just stop by saying this. I'm assuming some of you, maybe half of you, actually have Gizmak the Terrible. If you do, congratulations. You have one of the coolest champions in all of Raid Shadow Legends, in my opinion. Even compared to other mythicals, I think this dude stands alone just in how unique and how capable he is. And again, how much he can do in essentially one turn. That's insane. Congrats, guys. Hope you enjoyed this guide. Much love, and as always, take care.